you're yeah. if you're hyperactive and you like being over involved, it's the perfect <laughs> position. Right. You're not standing around. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, there's so much about on the leadership side, but we don't we have limited time. Um, let's talk about the world today, because I obviously it's been. A, really tough year and it's yeah. not getting any better probably for, for the foreseeable future right um you wrote in here every downturn eventually has an upturn if we persevere with hope yeah what message could you give or do you give to your team your family your friends about being in dark times i mean obviously you've, you've dealt with a lot at west month the, the fire burned down eight buildings on campus you've mm-hmm. had you know a fair amount of things on just in this community but just on a gl- more global level, this is a tough time. And, uh, and that's such a hopeful thought. Uh, talk about that. Well, I, I totally believe, you know, my faith in Christ is the most important thing to me. I think when you have a shaping value like that, that it, it just is what sustains you. And I'd like to go back to my father's death because it's preceded seven years earlier by the death of one of my favorite mentors who, who was killed quite tragically in an accident on Mount Hood. That was 1982, I just started my, fr- my first year at Princeton Seminary, and I, I went to see my, my philosophy of religion professor, Diogenes Allen, and I had just met him, and I was devastated. And he had just written a book called Traces of God in a Frequently Hostile World, and it's about the problem of evil and suffering. Hmm. And he helped me work through from a philosophical and spiritual standpoint, the problem of evil and suffering. Fast forward seven years, my dad dies. It was emotionally devastating to me, but it was completely disorienting for my mother and my sister. But I had worked through the problem of evil and suffering seven years earlier, and I was then able to be emotionally present to my mother and sister in ways that really mattered to them. Mm. And then you keep going through in life, and I think each challenge, each crucible experience, if you will do the work to understand what spiritual lesson you need to learn from it, it prepares you for things coming that you don't even know. Like learning how to persevere in the face of adversity, not knowing when it will, when it will end. Mm-hmm. That has become so valuable yeah. during my time at Westmont because we've had so many things to overcome. And you, you come to our current moment, you've got to be adaptable. You have got to take the input that's saying things have got to change. What are the things that are moving in society? What are the ways in which they fit within the framework of Westmont? And then how do we create the groundswell that will permit that to happen? Part of what we're doing right now, I mean, we have both the COVID-19 response and the racial conversation response. And so we're working from the board at every level of the college, uh, doing readings, bringing in special speakers, doing special focus. Uh, Even today, uh, Fridays, uh, Carmel Saad, our social psychology prof, is doing a series on implicit bias and helping us understand the problems of implicit bias, the fact that every one of us has prejudice. And if you actually deal with the issue of implicit bias, it's the lowest threshold way to get at the fact that we all have prejudice. Hmm. Well, once you start there, you can begin working on it. 